Remarketing is something which is crucial to the success of your AdWords campaigns. You might not be familiar with the term remarketing, but I am almost 100% confident that you are familiar with the concept of remarketing. Have you ever been to a website, you browse around their products, maybe it was Amazon, maybe it was another website, and you left the website, you didn't necessarily buy anything, and all of a sudden you start seeing ads for that company as you continue to browse the web. You might be on the Wall Street Journal, you might be on another website, you might be on a forum. Sometimes you'll even see ads for the specific product you were looking for. Pretty creepy, right? That's remarketing. Um, a lot of people love them, a lot of people hate them, but whether you like them or hate them, it doesn't really matter because remarketing is one of the most effective and popular tools in an advertiser's toolbox. There's a lot of different types of remarketing and there's a lot of different benefits to remarketing. The main purpose of this video and the next video is gonna be how to set up remarketing on your site. We're not gonna go into detail in developing all the different types of remarketing campaigns because this course is focusing on Google search and a lot of remarketing is done on Google display. But we will talk about the process, we will talk about understanding and remarketing theory, um, and we're gonna talk about and cover all the key components and the key aspects of setting up a remarketing campaign so you could understand it and you can go ahead and do it yourself. So like we just said, remarketing essentially allows you to show ads specifically to people who have viewed your website before. That is remarketing at the most basic, broadest level. It could be also for apps. If you have an app, remarketing for apps could be showing ads specifically to people who viewed your apps before. So those are the, that's really what remarketing is. It's not necessarily showing ads to people who are now looking for keywords, who are searching Google for queries. It's only advertising to people who have previously interacted with your brand um, via through an app, through the mobile website, or through the actual website. So as you could see, um, or as you could imagine, how powerful that is, because one of the most, um, one of the largest struggles an advertiser has to overcome when advertising is brand recognition, getting in front of the consumer multiple times. As we're gonna talk about, um, most people will not buy or, or, or you know, convert on their first visit or oftentimes for certain visits, their second and third visit. It's very important, especially today with the amount of digital advertising that's happening, the amount of different companies and competition that's using AdWords and that's using remarketing, it's extremely important to continue to stay in front of your potential customer. Remarketing is the way that we can make that happen. We bring them into the website initially through a search ad. We then continue to appeal to them through remarketing, showing them ads specifically um, as they continue to browse the internet or as they continue to search Google uh, for answers to their questions. So let's talk about the different types of remarketing campaigns um, that are available inside Google AdWords. The first type of campaign we have is a standard remarketing campaign. It is the display network and display network apps. What does that mean? Standard remarketing is somebody comes to my site, right? Say somebody comes to, to Poppin and they look for office chairs. Uh, they're browsing around our office chairs page, they then leave the site, they, maybe they add a chair to their cart but they don't buy, um, and then they leave. Standard remarketing allows me to say, hey, when that person is now browsing the web and they're on websites contained in the Google Display Network, for example, the Huffington Post and, um, ESPN or, or Bloomberg Media, there's, there's two million, over two million different websites that are included in the, in the Google Display Network that will show AdWords Display Network ads. And I'm saying, hey, when they're on those websites, I wanna bid um, for a click for them to show my ad um, to that person who was, now, who was previously viewing my pop and shares. Um, and I could also choose to show those ads on Display Network mobile apps or web apps. So that's what standard remarketing is. It's the most popular form of remarketing. You came to my website, now I wanna show you ads on the Google Display Network as you continue to browse the web. That is the essence of remarketing. It's the most standard, most popular form of remarketing and it's really gonna be the type of remarketing that you're most likely going to use. You also have what's called dynamic remarketing which is specifically um, useful for e-commerce. So this is the thing we talked about. If you're on Amazon, you're viewing a random product, you know, corduroy rucksacks, whatever it may be. I actually have a corduroy rucksack and I like it very much. But even if you're using a very, very random, you're viewing a very random product, dynamic remarketing allows you to then show ads for that specific product as that person continues to browse the web. So for example, if I was searching for different corduroy rucksacks and I didn't buy any, and now I'm reading a blog on um, BuzzFeed, they could show me 
specific image ads that it contain the images of the products and if I click it'll bring me back to that exact product page. So dynamic remarketing, dynamic, the concept of dynamic is it's there's movement or there's customization based on what products or services I was viewing on a website and dynamic remarketing allows you to show those specific products and services in your ads to your previous website visitors. Um, so that's very, very, um, partic it's very, it's very particular to, to e-commerce. You also have remarketing for mobile apps, okay? So people who have viewed your mobile app or you viewed your mobile website, I want to you know specifically target them and show them ads on other mobile websites on other mobile websites, excuse me, or other mobile apps. So that's specifically for the mobile experience. If you've used my app, if you've used my mobile website, you're then added to a remarketing audience, and I'm then going to show you ads as you're on other apps or other mobile websites. You also have a very interesting type of remarketing, which is gaining in popularity called remarketing and search. So People who come to my website, so say for example, Joe searched Google for padded leather office chairs and they saw a search ad for Poppin. They click on the ad, they view our products, um, they spend some time on the site, then they leave. Tomorrow, they go back to Google. They're not on a display network site, they're not reading a feed, they're back to Google search and they type in, once again, um, you know, tufted leather office chairs with padding. So it's very similar to my search. I could specifically set separate bids for the previous website visitors in search. That's called remarketing lists in search ads. So for example, I might say, hey, if a person now has seen my website yesterday, they've been to the site, they have brand recognition, I could then put a different message in the ad. I could say, hey, come back for a 10% coupon. We really want you to get this chair. Um, or I might even want to bid more aggressively. So I might say, hey, um, this person has been to our site, he's, he's educated himself a little bit more, he's probably closer now towards the bottom of the buyer funnel, getting close to that sales stage. Um, let me bid you know, an extra dollar per click on a second time visit. So that's what remarketing lists in search ads allows you to do. Another thing it allows you to do is to be a little bit more broad with your keywords because somebody's been to your site before, they understand what you sell, they know what you offer, um, so we could be a little broader with our keywords without being as nervous of wasting money um, for bad clicks for people who are not really going to um, have their needs fulfilled with our website. So those are a few different ways you could strategically use remarketing lists and search ads to your advantage. Uh, keep those things in mind because as you continue to build out your remarketing strategy and as you get more advanced in remarketing, those are going to be some very, very powerful and helpful tips. Lastly, we have remarketing in video. Uh, video remarketing. So remarket to people who viewed your YouTube video. By linking your YouTube channel to your AdWords account, Google will be able to track who viewed your YouTube video as long as they're signed into Google and we could continue to remarket to those people throughout the Google Display Network and throughout Google Search. So um, certain companies will be publishing videos, producing videos, they might be uh, user reviews, they might be product reviews, they might be explainer videos. So if you're promoting those videos in a successful way and people are watching it, uh, it's great to be able to remarket to those people through, as they continue to use the internet, view other websites, and go back to Google for search because then there's that brand recognition is there, they've interacted with your video, they've already expressed some sort of interest, they've already engaged with your brand. Um, so it's a very, very powerful way to, to enhance the effectiveness of your, um, your video presence online. So that's remarketing with video. And we're gonna go through um, the next video, we're gonna actually go into the AdWords account and I'll show you um, exactly where all these different video, um, these remarketing types are. And um, we're also just very shortly going to talk about the actual remarketing process, what you technically need to do to actually have it set up. So let's just talk about first the benefits of remarketing. And these are just some of the benefits, the most basic ones. Number one, reach people when they are most likely to buy. And that's a very, very powerful thing. Um, like we talked about, we'll get more information on a visitor the more they're on our site. So for example, if somebody comes to our site and we see they viewed five pages and then they've left, we know that they're gonna go and continue to educate themselves. They weren't a bad visitor, they didn't come and bounce right away. Um, and we could then show that ad um, specifically on certain websites that talk about office chairs or file cabinets or the other things that we sell. So we could reasonably assume that we're reaching them during their stage when they're continuing to educate themselves and continuing to shop. Um, so that's a very powerful um, concept in remarketing. You're reaching people, you have the control, you have the ability to set up remarketing where you reach people at the point where they're most likely to buy. Um, the second major, major factor in remarketing is tailored lists. 
remarketing is not just about your previous website visitors. It's specific visitors who have taken specific actions. By setting up lists and creating remarketing rules, I could show ads to people who just visited certain pages. I could show, peop I could show ads specifically to people who abandoned my cart or both. So for example, I might have, I might have one list um, that is a rule-based list that is only populated. The audience of this list are only people who have added a product to my cart but then abandoned without, without checking out. The way you create those lists, and I'm going to show you in the next video, is by rules. So for example, let's say my, um, my cart page is poppin.com forward slash cart. So it would be anybody who, ha in order to be on the cart abandoner list, you have had to have viewed that URL cart, but you also have, you have to have not viewed poppin.com forward slash order complete, which signifies somebody who actually paid. So that, by combining those two rules, we know that somebody viewed the cart, which means they had to have added a product to their cart, but they didn't view the order complete page, which means they didn't pay, so that there we could label those people cart abandoners. So we know that they're really good visitors, they've made it into the funnel, but something, they got busy, maybe the pricing wasn't right, maybe they wanted to educate themselves a little more, do some comparison shopping, whatever it is. So for that audience, we could bid very aggressively. We could say, um, bid a little bit higher per click, um, show my ads on a broader range of websites, run my ads 24 seven, whatever it may be. And what's most important is the messaging in the ad. We could write a, or we could design an ad that says, um, come back, complete your purchase, and here's a 5% off coupon code. And we're telling the customer that we know that you have a product in your cart, come back. Um, we might have another audience running a, in a different remarketing ad group that's targeting all website visitors who have visited at least two pages. And that's another rule we could set up. Um, for those visitors, we might wanna say, um, it's a little bit less of an aggressive bid. These are people who are still educating themselves. They didn't, they didn't indicate to us that they're gonna buy from us yet. Um, so they're not as um, good a, or high quality of a visitor or of an audience as the cart abandoners. We might also say, anybody who came and just viewed one page or Anybody who came and viewed our blog page, we don't want to honor remarketing audience at all. And you could do that by creating tailored lists. So that's really the power and the concept of creating these tailored lists. It's, it's really, really important um, and really cool stuff. Um, the Google Display Network has a tremendous reach. For most advertisers, just advertising a traditional display network campaign to anybody, to anybody who is viewing a product or page um, that's relevant to your website, it's too broad. It's very easy to spend a lot of money on the Google Display Network and not see any returns. It's, it's the most um, wild, I would say. It's a very, it, could, it could get very out of control, the Google Display Network, um, with what you spend on and in who you spend it on. Remarketing allows you to only tailor your previous website visitors but you have the reach, the volume of those two million properties on the Google Display Network. So it's a brilliant way to control your spending, to make sure you're getting very high quality traffic while maintaining um, a very large potential reach, okay? You also get a lot of detailed reporting on the Google Display Network. You could see a tremendous amount of insight into your traffic. You could see um, affinity audiences, what types of consumer these people are who are on, on your audience, where they're hanging out online, where your, um, where your remarketing ads are being placed, on which websites are your remarketing ads being placed. Um, you could get a tremendous amount of insight and you could learn a lot about your audience. You could learn a lot about your consumer base and it could be, remarketing could be a very, very powerful tool for market research. And fifth, and perhaps even most importantly, 99% of visitors won't buy their first time on your site. Okay, if you're selling a product or you're trying to get people to sign up for a service or to, to take a conversion, on average, 99% of people will not buy on their first time. This shows you how important it is to really set up remarketing um, and to make sure you're continuing to advertise to your uh, customers on an ongoing basis. So remarketing is really, really important in that way um, because in some cases, I hate to say it, in some cases, a Google AdWords campaign without remarketing um, could oftentimes be completely ineffective because people are coming to your site and then they're leaving your site and then they're just educating themselves further, they're seeing their competition and you are nowhere to be found anymore. So remarketing, at least remarketing lists and search ads, which is this number four over here, at least remarketing lists and search ads is very important. I'm gonna show you how to set that up in the next campaign. One other thing to, to realize, and we'll, we'll, we'll reiterate this, is that in order to even launch a remarketing campaign, currently Google requires that you have 1,000 people on your remarketing audience. Um, so you're gonna to have to have your remarketing tag on your website, and I know you might be getting overwhelmed when I say remarketing tag, but don't worry. In just a couple minutes, we're gonna go over exactly what the tag is, how it works, how to find it, um, 
and, and kind of seeing the remarketing process from a technical perspective. This is all theory. This is all just understanding what remarketing is, how it works, what the benefits are, um, what the different types of remarketing campaigns we could run. Um, and it's very important to get a good sense of this and get a firm grip, gr grip rather, on how this works. So let's now, bear with me, we're going to erase this and we're going to talk about exactly how remarketing lists um, work, how we set them up, and what the process looks like.